So good morning, uh, or good afternoon, or good evening, everyone. So depending on where you are, uh, welcome to our tutorial on <clears throat> conversational recommendation systems. So this tutorial, uh, I'm, my name is Yongfeng uh, from uh, uh, Rutgers University. So this tutorial is going to be presented by four authors, uh, including Zhuo Hui, Yi Kun, and uh, myself uh, from Rutgers University, and uh, Yi Zhang from uh, UC Santa Cruz. So uh, here is a brief outline of the uh, tutorial. Uh, I'm going to first introduce the, uh, to, to provide an introduction and the background of conversational recommendation. And then uh, Equin is going to introduce the problem formalization and uh, data sets as well as, as well as evaluation methods for conversational recommendation. And after that, uh, uh, Zhu Hui is going to introduce uh, conversational recommendation methods. <clears throat> And eventually, uh, E is going to introduce uh, some toolkits and the real world systems of uh, uh, conversational recommendation. So first, uh, a uh, introduction and a background of this uh, tutorial. <clears throat> so conversational recommendation provides uh, personalized recommendations through a natural language dialogue with users. So the dialogue could either be conducted based on visual interfaces, such as the uh, left uh, three figures where the user <clears throat> chat with the agent through a uh, natural language dialogue in this uh, uh, chat box, or that it could be conducted using a spoken interface so that user and the agent can talk with each other directly uh, through voice channels. So here is a, a brief history of conversational recommendation research. We know that the research on conversational recommendation has been emerging in recent years. But the basic concept actually dates back to uh, many of the early research in IR, <coughs> recommender systems, and uh, human computer interaction communities. For example, this figure shows the number of papers in Google Scholar by using queries, uh, conversational recommendation uh, or conversational recommender. Uh, but we have to point out that uh, this may not represent all of the papers in this direction because many papers on the related topic may not include these uh, exact words. <clears throat> so uh, about 30 years ago, uh, in the year of 1987, Croft and Thompson proposed the uh, I3R system. So this is one of the first uh, information, information seeking system that uh, enables user system interaction uh, through dialogue for information seeking. So later in 1995, uh, Belkin developed the uh, Merit system, which is an interactive information system by using a script-based uh, uh, conversational interactions. Later in the year of 2000, uh, Gawker and Thompson uh, proposed uh, uh, a conversational recommendation system. So as far as we know, this is uh, the, uh, the first work that formally proposed the concept of a conversational recommendation system. And the authors developed a conversational recommendation system for place recommendation. And in this paper, the term conversational recommendation is formally introduced. So these two paper, uh, sorry, these two uh, figures comes from the uh, uh, the above paper. And uh, in the left side, uh, this is an example conversation described in the system in, in the paper. And in the right side, this is the architecture of the uh, 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 of the proposed system. <clears throat> So we can see that the uh, expected conversation and the model architecture have been very close to modern conversational recommendation systems. For example, in the, in the right side, uh, we have dialogue manager and we have a speech recognizer and a speech generator, which corresponds to a natural language understanding and a natural language and, uh, generation uh, components in modern uh, conversational recommendation systems. And of course, we have user modeling, user modeling uh, 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 subsystem and the uh, retrieval as well as a recommendation subsystem. So just imagine 20 years ago, uh, so with no deep learning and even uh, the shallow factorization models are yet to become uh, mature. Okay? But the basic idea of a conversational recommendation has been uh, very advanced. But after uh, 2000, uh, all the way to the year of 2017, uh, the research on this direction has been uh, stable, but uh, the, but uh, uh, the growth is slow during these uh, uh, years. 
So uh, research, during these years, researchers have uh, uh, researched on different topics on conversational recommendation. For example, researchers have been consider their natural language problems in conversational recommendation. And they have considered their diversity problem in conversational recommendation. So researchers have also um, proposed a critic-based conversational recommendation systems. <clears throat> so they have also considered the evaluation of conversational recommendation systems, as well as considering the uh, dynamics of uh, user preferences. So researchers also even consider the conversational recommendation for code start scenarios. <clears throat> So recently, in the year of uh, 2018, there has been a new boom in this direction, uh, largely due to the uh, prospering of deep learning and the reinforcement learning techniques, which serve as the uh, key techniques for modern conversational recommendation systems. So here are some representative, but not, but not all of the paper, not, not, uh, some representative papers in the area. For example, researchers adopted uh, reinforcement learning for dialogue state management and adoptive deep learning for dialogue understanding and uh, response generation. So in the later part of this uh, tutorial, we're going to introduce more details about uh, the uh, state-of-the-art state uh, conversational recommendation models. So why there is a new boom in conversational recommendation in the recent years? So uh, we can see this problem from two perspectives. Perspect First one is the technical perspective. Another one is a commercial perspective. So technically, uh, Conversational AI is uh, one of the closest uh, tasks to a Turing test and a strong AI. And uh, in, the mean, in the meantime, a conversational recommendation is a well-defined uh, conversational AI task. Actually, it is a, uh, um, a task-oriented conversational AI <coughs> system. It's a, a goal-oriented conversational AI system. So it is a good scenario to test how far have we gone on the road of AI with uh, current techniques, for example, with deep learning and uh, reinforcement learning techniques. And it also helps to refine the current techniques and to develop new techniques through uh, uh, intelligent uh, conversational agents. So another perspective commercially, so recent advance on deep learning and reinforcement learning has made a conversational recommendation largely usable for end users. And because of this, uh, more and more commercial conversational recommendation systems are being used, are really being used by users. So this helps to accumulate more and more conversational data and the usage, pa usage pattern from these systems. So with this data and uh, with this uh, usage pattern, it further helps us to refine the conversational recommendation models, for example, the deep learning models. So <clears throat> because of this, there is there has built a uh, virtuous cycle between the user and the system, both commercially and uh, technically. So this gives the new boom to uh, the research in the re both the research and the application of uh, conversational recommendation systems. So in the following part, uh, Equin is going to introduce the uh, problem formalization uh, of conversational recommendation systems. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Equin. Uh, I will give you a brief introduction to the problem formulation of conversational recommender system. Uh, first, I will give a basic problem formulation of the problem, followed by three paradigms, which are used to uh, classifying existing works. And then I will pose several challenges of this problem. Okay, that's here's the overview of the general conversational AI system. Uh, basically, it includes several components. Uh, first of all, uh, it can includes a conversational recommender system, which is the focus of this tutorial. Uh, the basic difference between a conversational recommender system and a conventional uh, recommender system is that uh, for the conversational recommender system or simply CRS, uh, it provides a multi-round interaction between user and system, while uh, the conventional recommender system only provides one round interaction. That means it only provides, it only makes one time a recommendation. Uh, the common of the both recommender systems is that they pr the goal is to help user find the relevant information they want. And the second component in, a, in the whole system is, may include a conversational search system. Uh, the boundary between a CRS and a conversational search system is kind of blurred. Uh, things, uh, both of their goal is to rank relevant items via multi-term uh, uh, dialogue from user, item, uh, user system interaction. The minor difference between these two systems is that 
the CRS focus more on user modeling from uh, either from uh, existing uh, history, dialogue history, or from external uh, user profile. For the conversational search system, uh, it focuses more on to understand the search query, like what's the intent of the user by typing this uh, search query. And another component in this whole system is a uh, conversational QA. Uh, the common goal of the, uh, the common thing of a uh, CRS and the conversational QA is that they both provide multi round user system interaction by asking questions. Uh, the difference is that their goals are kind of dis distinguished. For the CRS, the goal is, of course, to recommend good items to user while the goal of a conversation with QA is simply to, add, to answer the question given by the user. And sometimes the, the whole system may include a social chatbot. Uh, the, both, both, both CRS and chatbot also provide multi-round uh, conversational interaction, but the goal or uh, the target are different. Uh, for CRS, since it's, a, it's target, it's task oriented, uh, that is to provide good items for recommendation. So the goal is to shorten the length of dialogue. While the social chatbot, it's more like a, a chip chat. So um, sometimes the agent need to change topic, switch topic, lead conversations. So the goal is to prolong the length of dialogue. And uh, sometimes uh, if uh, there's a final uh, component, which is, we call it voice commanding. Uh, both uh, in here, CR, both CRS and the voice commanding are goal oriented. Uh, but the difference that uh, their goals are also different. Recommenda uh, CRS, uh, the goal of CRS is of course rec make recommendations while the voice command, the goal of voice commanding is to implement user command as, as the goal that for example, the user may ask the system to turn on the light or play a song. Okay. Once you understand what's the difference uh, between the CRS and other kind of components in a whole conversational AI system, now here is the basic definition of the conversational recommender system. So for CRS, it takes as input a, some dialogue history, which basically means uh, the last n utterances in the history dialogue. And uh, sometimes it will also take uh, as input the user preference, either uh, from external user history clicks or purchases behavior. And uh, uh, and sometimes it will also take uh, into consideration the external knowledge of items from, for example, the knowledge base or knowledge graph, etc., to have a better representation of the items. And the goal of CRS is to output mainly two things. The first is the next utterance that is used to interact with the user, and the type of different utterances the, the, uh, define the paradigms of different uh, CRS. We will talk about this later. And the second output is, the, of course, the recommended items to the user, either once or multiple times. So this is the major difference from the conv conventional recommender system where only one time recommendation is provided. And sometimes to make the recommendation to be more convincing, uh, some explanations may also be provided together with the recommendation to the user to convince the user uh, this, why, how this recommendation is made. So as I said, uh, if we consider different types of utterances in the conversation, we may have these uh, paradigms, th these different paradigms. Uh, if you look at the first paradigm, we name it, we call it the system is active and the user is passive or SAUP. Uh, in this paradigm, the user or the system will lead the whole conversation by asking questions to user. And here user is somehow passively uh, respond the questions and also directly answer the question. This is uh, more related to the uh, system initiative in conversational AI. And on the other stream, extreme, uh, that's the reverse, where user is active and system is passive. This has more application in voice command and QA, where user will drive the whole conversation by asking, by asking questions to the system, like, can you play me a song, etc. So in this case, it is more related to the user initiative in conversational AI. So if you look at the middle of these two extremes, you will find some mixed initiatives. Uh, we list two uh, categories or two paradigms. Uh, the first paradigm, we call it system is active and user engages, or simply SAUE. In this case, system will still ask questions and user respond to the question. But at the same time, both system and user will have some chit chat 
And the sometimes user may not directly answer the questions. I will show you an example later. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, to be more balanced between user and system uh, in, in terms of how their, uh, their interaction, uh, we have uh, the third paradigm, which we call it system is active and the user is also active or simply SAUA. So in this, in this paradigm, both system and user will lead the conversation by asking questions to each other and also uh, uh, answer the question to each other. And as, at the same time, sometimes the system, both system and the user will have some chit chat. And the same things we, in this tutorial, we focus more on uh, conversation recommender system. Uh, we will dive into detail the first three paradigms. The first paradigm system is active and user passive. A uh, typical form of this paradigm is called system ask user respond. This is uh, first proposed in the paper in uh, uh, CIKM 2018. Uh, in, this, in this paper, uh, they, suggest, they suggest system will ask questions about the attributes of the items uh, to narrow down recommended uh, candidates. As you can see in this example, on the right hand side, these are the questions uh, asked by the system. Uh, in each question, you will find the, some uh, attributes or aspects of the item which are highlighted in red. And uh, the user is kind of passive. Uh, he or she uh, simply answer the questions. Uh, the blue, uh, if you look at the right hand side uh, uh, answers, the blue, the highlight blue words are simply the value of the attribute of the certain uh, item. So for this paradigm, the problem definition is still the same, except that the output utterance may be a little bit different. Uh, since uh, the next utterance here, we refer to the system. Uh, so here, the next utterance is more about the quest, the next question to ask the user. Or in, in this paper, it's uh, the next attribute to ask the user. And for the second paradigm, we are user is active and uh, system is active and user engages. Uh, in this uh, typical form of this paradigm is that uh, uh, it's the sour plus chit chat. That means uh, systems still ask questions, user respond, and plus some additional chit chatting. Uh, if you look at this example, uh, in the second utterance, where uh, the system the, or the agent asks a question, do you prefer books by same order or same genre? The user do not directly answer this question. What he or she said is, I'm interested in reading classic examples in American literature. This is some more like some chit chat or express his or her uh, preferences. Then the system will follow the topic and saying like literary realism is common derived in classic American literature. This is a, that is highlighted in fourth uh, utterance in red box. This is also somehow like a chit chat by the system. So uh, basically you can see in this paradigm, uh, both uh, the system still um, basically ask questions and the user uh, answer the question, but uh, there will be some chit chat thing uh, in, inside this whole uh, conversation. So for this problem uh, in this paradigm too, the output next utterance will be the combination of a question and chit chat. Uh, and for the third paradigm uh, that is system is active and user is also active. The typical form is sour plus chit chat plus user asks system respond. This is recently proposed in a recent paper. <coughs> uh, we are, you can see both system and the user will lead conversation by asking questions. For example, if you look at the, uh, the first sentence in the red box on the right uh, figure, you can see the, the user start uh, asking the questions about the movie star. Uh, so in this case, the, for the problem formulation, uh, the output utterance will be either a question that, uh, that, are, that is used to ask, ask the user or some response uh, to the user's question. Here we list uh, some representative works uh, following three paradigms. Uh, we will uh, talk about detail of some of these, these works in a later section. And, but uh, I would like to let you know that uh, if you look at from paradigm one to paradigm three, you will find the dialogue is more natural. That is more uh, similar to our daily uh, talk. 
So uh, once you know what the problem definition of this conversation recommender system, so what are the challenges? Uh, here we list several challenges. Uh, first thing is uh, how can we represent the dialogue state and dialogue action? Here the dialogue state means, uh, for example, we have some dialogue history uh, what keywords you have extracted from the information or whether it is a good time to recommend or to do some other actions. So this keeps the dialogue state. And also how can we represent this dialogue action? That is, uh, the, for example, the system action includes the recommend, recommending action, uh, the uh, asking question action or greetings or some uh, chit chatting. And second, uh, the challenge is how to understand the user preferences from dialogue, from the uh, history dialogue or other external uh, behaviors like clicking or purchasing. And the next uh, challenge is uh, when to do the respond and uh, recommend. This is a very important uh, challenge uh, in, in the conversational recommender system. That is because you can, the system cannot always uh, recommending uh, items to user which may annoy the user. <clears throat> and the next challenge is uh, sometimes if we decide, the system decides to respond to user's question or to, yeah, to user's question or to user's answer, uh, the, the system may decide what kind of question or what kind of response to, to uh, ask or answer the user. And if the system decides to make recommendations, then the key challenge is what items uh, are relevant and can be used to recommend to the user. So these are the many challenges in the conversation recommender system. So uh, once, since you know the uh, problem of conversation recommender, recommender system, next section, I will go through the possible data sets and the evaluation method to uh, approach this problem. Here we show a list of uh, frequently used data sets following three paradigms. For example, in, for the first three uh, data sets, uh, they follow the paradigm one. That is, these data sets uh, basically provide a system as user, a system is active and user passive paradigm. And in this case, system mainly asks questions to the user and the user simply responds to the question. And they are from domains like restaurant, e-commerce, etc. And uh, for the second three uh, data sets, they follow the second paradigm uh, and they are in the domain like movie, music, sports, etc. And the last two data sets, they follow the paradigm three. Uh, in this case, the dialogue, the dialogue is more natural, includes both questions, uh, response, or chit chat, etc. And uh, one thing to notice that some data sets may include external knowledge. So we have another column here in the table. Uh, it indicates whether the uh, external knowledge like knowledge base or knowledge graph are used in the data set to have a good representation of on items or on even users. So uh, here I will give uh, three examples for each paradigm. Uh, for example, in the first paradigm, uh, as AUP, we have a typical, a typical data set called SOUR data set. This is still from the uh, CICAM paper in 2018. Uh, in this data set, they made assumption that each user review can be converted to a conversation. Uh, and uh, uh, the aspects that appear earlier in the review should also appear early in the conversation. This is a strong assumption they made in this data set. Uh, as an example, it shows below. On the left hand side figure, uh, it shows the, the review from Amazon data set. And you can see there are some aspects. The aspect you can think as the attributes of the item, like uh, the attributes are highlighted in blue, like network, memory, battery, etc. And uh, they convert this whole review thing into a dialogue, a simulated dialogue on the right hand side. And you can see that uh, the order of the questions asked by the system is follow the follow the old uh, order of the. Uh, occurrence of these aspects, like network first, memory second, then battery third. Uh, for this data set, it's basically focused on, focus on e-commerce domain. Here is the data uh, set of statistics, statistics, and uh, it contains four subcategories, electronics, CDs, Kindle store, and cell phones. So they are basically convert 
uh, Amazon reviews into uh, such uh, dialogue thing. And here is a similar uh, data, data set that follow the paradigm one. They also, this data set is also converted from the, uh, some user review, but it's from Yelp. What they made assumption that five item attributes uh, should be available as candidate facets to construct this agent's question. So they, since they also follow the paradigm one, uh, the system still asks questions and you respond to such questions. Uh, <clears throat> and the domain they consider is uh, the restaurant from Yelp. And uh, as an example show on the right, you can see uh, uh, here are some uh, facets, which is sim simply think as the attributes of some item. Uh, they include like categories, state, city, price range, etc. So they make such dialogue uh, by asking questions about these facets and the user will uh, answer the value uh, of these uh, questions with respect to a certain facet. And on the left-hand side, this is the data set statistics. Okay, for the second paradigm, uh, which is system is active, user engages, where uh, user somehow engage in the conversation a little bit. A uh, typical example, uh, typical data set is called Redial. This is from the paper in Europe 2018. Uh, when the assumption they made in this, this data set is that each dialogue should contain at least 10 messages and also mentions at least four different movies. And since this, this data set is not converted from any review thing or review, other review data sets, it is generated by the cross source workers. So they, they, will pair, uh, uh, they will pair two cross source workers to have a chat and they can only talk about the movies. So the content is uh, they talk about is only the movie. And uh, they basically follow uh, one cross source worker will ask questions about uh, uh, what kind of movies the other uh, person may like and the other cross source worker will answer the questions. But sometimes you can see they will have a chit chat. On the below figure on the right, this is the user interface they develop to create such data sets. And uh, uh, since they only talk about, talk about movie, the domain of this data set is only movie. And uh, on the right hand side, this is data set statistics you can see. Okay, to be a more mature data set that following the paradigm three, uh, which is which means the system, both system and user are active. Uh, here's a data set called Do Rectile from uh, ACO 2020. It's a recent data set. Uh, the assumption they made in this, set, this data set is that seekers, or simply the users, are, were, are assigned predefined profiles. That is, uh, they have some profiles like the attributes or uh, items uh, that the user may like, and they will, uh, they will first assign to the seekers. And then uh, since uh, this, this, this data set is also generated by some cross source workers and the seeker, since the seeker is assigned some predefined profiles to express their preference. So in the content or the utterance is generated by these seekers, it should be consistent with their predefined profiles. And for each dialogue or, or each utterance, they will follow some predefined task templates. Uh, for example, on the right uh, on the right figure, you can see uh, the maybe the first template like go and it's a QA. That means the seeker can take initiative by asking questions or asking the uh, information about certain movie to to the system. So this data set is obviously a uh, follows the paradigm three. And the, on, in, in this data set, it contains domains. It's kind of rich. Uh, it contains domains like movie, uh, music, restaurant, news, etc. And here is the data set statistics. Okay, uh, once we have these data sets, and also maybe uh, you may develop some methods, suppose, uh, how can we do the evaluation? So first we need to understand what's the motivation of doing such evaluation. Uh, I will maybe talk about in two perspectives. For the, from the research perspective, our goal is to understand and improve the virtual assistant, which is simply the conversational recommender system. Uh, we want to understand how to improve the design and also the model training of this our, our system. Uh, our goal is to, uh, from the evaluation results, want to ensure the solution is as effective as it can be, and also to find some other areas that can be improved. 
and uh, more on the business perspective, uh, a successful uh, conversation recommender system will demonstrate uh, the impact of success and the, the progress of the current team. Uh, <clears throat> also, uh, for a good evaluation results, will provide uh, where we improve the team model and also to re retain supports from different stakeholders and decision makers. This is a brief taxonomy of our existing approaches to do the evaluation for the conversational system. Um, basically, it includes, includes three parts. Uh, if we look at from right to left hand side, uh, on the rightmost, there's one called expert design models. It includes two uh, methods, one simulation, one calculation. For the, for the calculation, it simply refers uh, to the uh, offline metrics like precision recall for the recommendation or blue rock for uh, maybe sentence generation, etc. So these, uh, to, if we evaluate in this way, uh, since we, 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 we may ask experts to design several metrics, we can simply uh, train the model and run it on test set to show the results, to show the evaluation results. And a more mature, maybe a better way to do the offline evaluations to the simulation, that is we can create some simulation environment to simulate uh, how the user behavior during conversation. And this is somehow more even complicated. And if you look at the middle uh, part, uh, which we call it user participation, this more refers to the uh, to the online evaluation. For example, industry, we may do A/B test to see uh, how what was the performance of the whole uh, conversation. And the other and the other evaluation method we call it usability expert, which is simply we may invite some experts and do some questionnaire uh, to evaluate the whole conversation. We will show some example uh, some example of questionnaires. So to be more concrete, uh, here uh, we will talk about the uh, specific metrics that can be used to evaluate a CRS. Uh, to, uh, before talking about the specific metrics, uh, a complete evaluation of CRS may include at, at least these following parts. For example, if we want to evaluate the, uh, only the conversation quality, we may, we may consider the turn level or dialogue level, business level, etc. And also if we only evaluate the uh, recommend recommendation quality, we may also consider these three levels. And sometimes we will jointly evaluate the recommend both recommendation and the uh, conversation and performance. So uh, to evaluate the conversation quality, these are possible metrics we can consider. Uh, for the turn level, on the turn level, we may measure the quality of system generated, uh, the system generated sentences, uh, like the fluency or readability using the metrics like blue and rock. And uh, we may also want to uh, measure the relevance of system generated questions or response. As for example, in the, uh, in the CICAM paper, the question, each question will be associated with an uh, item attribute. So we can, uh, measure the relevance uh, or uh, using metrics like accuracy or coverage of a good attribute in each question. And uh, we may also consider the frequency of dialogue acts. That is, uh, does the, if the system always making recommendations or always asking questions without doing other things, this is definitely not a good conversation. A good conversation may include, uh, the free, may consider the frequency of uh, making recommendations, asking questions, and other dialogue acts, and also we may uh, we can evaluate the uh, the conversation by looking at the user cooperativeness. That is whether we use whether the user will keep providing the responses uh, when system asks a question. Sometimes the user may leave the conversation and and, start and terminate. This is definitely a bad conversation. But uh, uh, although we have these metrics on term level. Uh, there's an obvious limitation that we cannot measure the consistency between the, of the dialogue and the conversion rate since the turn level metric only evaluate a certain only evaluate each utterance. So in order to evaluate the dialogue level metrics, we can maybe consider these two things. Uh, for example, uh, in the conversation recommender system, since the goal it's goal oriented, we may measure the dialogue length. We want to shorten the length of dialogue, and also we may consider the ratio of dialogue success and whether uh, it's a good recommendation at the end. 
and also uh, for business level metrics, uh, since it's more related, maybe related to profit, we may consider conversion rate per session or sales revenue, and also the user satisfaction ratings, etc. On the recommendation quality, uh, here are some typical evaluation metrics on also on three levels. For a turn level, we may consider the traditional uh, uh, recommendation uh, metric like accuracy per turn using uh, precision, recall, and the CG, et cetera. And uh, we may also, uh, similarly to the previous uh, uh, quality control in conversation, we may also consider the frequency of recommendation acts. The limitation is also the same. That is, we cannot measure the overall recommendation performance of the dialogue. That is because uh, if the dialogue is not that long, the, the recommendation may not be good. If, uh, if we ask more questions to users, we will we'll get better understanding of the user preference, so recommendation can be better. And uh, so in order to evaluate the whole performance, uh, we may include several dialogue level metrics, like uh, the recommendation accuracy at round K, uh, or the whole dialogue success rate. And similarly, we have some business level metrics for evaluate, evaluating the recommendation quality using conversion rate per dialogue, sales revenue, or user retention, or customer loyalty, et cetera. Here's one example of a CRS evaluation uh, used in the uh, CICAM paper. As you can see, for example, in the first uh, few sentences in the, in the yellow area, uh, these are basically the conversation uh, between the user and the system. So we may evaluate the conversation, this conversation uh, quality using the metric like hit rate at NK. It means the number of rounds until round K where the correct aspect is ranked to top N divided by N, uh, divided by K. Let's, let's, this metric consider both uh, the relevance of the aspect and also the length of the dialogue. And the second, if you look at the yellow, uh, the second blue area, uh, this is a the first recommendation provided by the system. So we can, if you want to evaluate the, simply the recommendation performance, we can use uh, the uh, the classic metric like NDC jet N uh, to to measure uh, whether the uh, good items are ranked higher in this recommendation list. And uh, also we may consider joint performance of conversation and recommendation. That is one possible uh, metric is NDC jet NK. It is very similar to the previous rate. Uh, it measures, it, it, is, it means the NDC jet top end recommendation list until round K divided by K. Here, uh, this metric consider both a recommendation performance uh, using NDCG as well as the dialogue length uh, around the K. So you want to both making good recommendations and shorten the length of dialogue. And here is the uh, some uh, examples of the user study or the questionnaire for expert. Uh, here are possible questions we can consider. Uh, for example, the usability of this uh, conversational recommender system. Uh, we can may ask the expert whether the bot is easy to interact with or whether the bot help me help you or help me to complete the task, like making good recommendations. And sometimes you may, uh, the expert may also be asked like whether the bot is intelligent or <clears throat> talk like a human. And also uh, more importantly, uh, the expert may be also asked uh, the loyalty, whether the expert will, will continue to use this bot again to do the recommendation or whether the expert is willing to make uh, recommendations using bot your friend, etc. So here is an example of questionnaire uh, that can also evaluate the joint performance of conversational recommender system. Okay, that's the end of the uh, data sets and evaluation. In the next part, uh, Zhuhui will give the will dive into detail of existing works of conversational recommendation system. Okay, thank you, Yikun. and. For this part, I will introduce some method, uh, especially the state-of-the-art method in uh, existing conversational recommendation methods. So uh, typically there are three typical conversation, conversational AI systems. So uh, the first, the left part is the end-to-end generative language models, which contains the classical sequence-to-sequence -sequence models 
and where it could benefit many downstream downstream NLP tasks such as like uh, question question answering and machine learning comprehension. Uh, in the right part, there's a recent very interesting work that has been proposed, uh, where the dialogue state is represented as a data flow graph. Um, moreover, well, it has, uh, however, it has not been explored for the conversational recognition, but uh, we do believe it will be very promising to integrate this idea in the future. So, uh, in the vision. So in this way, the most of the existing work are based on the modernized architecture where an intelligent conversational agent could be formulated as different, different functional modules. So for example, uh, specifically we split the four, four major modules. Uh, here we can draw some typical workflow of the CRS uh, conversational recommendation systems. The natural language understanding module focuses on extracting the extracting the information it expects from the user query and pass them into the dialogue state state management. Um, it decides which action to take given the current state, and then the work recommendation engine will integrate such state information and maybe also possible external knowledge to provide recommendation results. Um, sometimes with explanation or keep interact with the dialogue state, ma state management module to generate system response to the user. And also it should be noted that we split the framework into four modules, uh, uh, into these modules, but there's not a clear boundary to isolate, isolate them because every method that I will introduce later, it will have different focuses so that it doesn't mean when we introduce, for example, the dialogue state management uh, dialogue stage management method, there's no other modules for the corresponding method. So first we'll uh, introduce the natural language understanding and also uh, natural uh, language generation part. For natural language understanding, um, so the major goal of the natural language understanding is to interpret the uh, and also get comprehended what's the context of conversational really means. So it, it could be regarded as a kind of narrow task compared to the general NLP as this figure depict. So, but in the conversational recommender systems, typically the natural language understanding module will be operated to several tasks. For example, it should understand the item side information such as the category, the attribute, or the user intent, uh, or the user sentiment, etc. And for the natural language generations, there are existing some challenges where we should make sure the generated response are matched with the context of knowledge. On one hand, uh, on one hand, it should not opt. It should not only opt output some bland response such as yes, good, without any meaningful words that only for consistency. And we should make make a very a uh, trick balance to output this uh, consistent consistency and also the informative response. So uh, in the natural language generation part, there are typically the two uh, formats. Well, the first is the retrieval based one. It has the advantage of provi providing the fluent and the informative response. However, it is, it is less flexible since the, all the responses are picked up from the pre-built pools. Another format is a uh, generation based. Uh, it is flexible and uh, scalable to the new sentences that could be replied. But in order to make it controllable, the most common way to uh, the most common way is to design a template based method so that easy to generate a response through the slot fielding. So therefore it will be easy to combine the template and the context knowledge so that make sure the dialogue utterance could be more controllable. So the following work will uh, talks about that uh, focus on the natural language understanding and the natural language generation. This work uh, that has been uh, accepted by the CIKM 2018, uh, which we call it the system ask user respond. Uh, it belongs to the paradigm one because the user only provide the passive response. So in this, in this paper, uh, they hope to figure out the user preference by asking user questions. 
uh, about how the potential product after uh, and also uh, such potential product aspects should be included in the user uh, should be included in the user queries and also in the right side it will display the recommendation results when the conversational agent feels very confident and uh, it it display a multi-memory network to encode the input utterance and use a retrieval based format to select what could be the most relevant question to ask about the users. Uh, such formalization you can see in the, rest part, uh, in the left part where the Q0 is the initial query from the user and the Q1 to QK is the question that asks from that asks from the agents, which contains the aspect P. Such aspect P is extracted from the user earlier reviews, and the Q is the corresponding value that the user specified. After case conversational turns, when the when the user feels confident, the conversational agent will make the recommendation item V to the user, and this structured. This is a structure of the proposed unified multi-memory network, which contains the item and the query representations and also the search and the question modules. Since not all the sentences in the item representations are relevant to the current search query. So this method use attention mechanism to construct the memory embeddings so that the model can select the important signals. And also both the, the search module and the question modules use the negative sampling to retrieve the next questions that ask to ask to be asked for the to be asked the user or the item to be recommended to the user. And right here here right here attached the result figures of the proposed models. Uh, we could notice that the advantage sorry we could notice that the advantage of the conversational recommendations the red line and blue line represent the proposed multi-memory network and the personalized multi-memory network. So based on what Ikun has introduced in the metric above, the K right here is the number of the conversational runs. And we can see that the performance increase, the performance increase as the progress of the conversation, which is very intuitive because since as the conversational turns moves, there would be more aspect value information that could be utilized for the query representation learning. Therefore, the model can learn a better user preference more accurately and also feel the confidence could be higher to find the right item with more information that is describing the user preference. So, um, but this work has some limitations even though it has better matching functions uh, for, the, for the attributes and the product descriptions. Where the limitations is that it cannot build a very smart policy to decide when to ask or make recommendations. Instead, it uses a kind of simple threshold confidence score as a flag to, to decide whether the model could, should, have, should provide recommendation results, results or ask some questions. And also these models, uh, it is lack of the historical user behaviors. For example, the user purchase history, the user click history, they are not considered in this method. So in the following part, uh, it has proposed some of the advanced methods that somehow solve these problems. So uh, this work has been published in the SIGR 2020 and uh, but it still belongs to the paradigm one, which users cannot provide active uh, uh, provide active feedbacks, and it has improved the question space compared to the SOAR, the previous work. Where right here the questions include not only the aspect of value from the user side, but also cover the item attributes, which could be extracted from the conversational utterance also. Uh, could be extracted from the conversational, conversational utterance too. So the user, and also another part is the user brief updating module to track the user item interactions. Uh, for this part, the natural language understanding is different from the previous one. This only provides the response like yes, no, or I'm not sure from the users, which could be easily converted to the vector. 
um, since those, the user cannot provide any more like uh, semantics, so we so so we put this part as uh, belongs to the part number one. And for the natural language generation part, it's using a predefined template so that uh, it will generate the questions by the slot fit, filling. Since in this work, it's use uh, the user ratings over the items and also can ask questions about the item attributes. So compared to the personalized multi-memory network, the performance get uh, improved. And also you can see uh, with the rounds increase, the performance also grows, which also makes sense, right? Because more rounds of the conversations brings better performance. Um, according to uh, the, the data set that, that Econ has introduced before, there's a data set we, uh, we, which is well, very well known is recommendation through the dialogue, it's a redel. And in this paper, they also propose the baseline methods that uh, which modified a hierarchical recurrent encoder decoder model. This, uh, since the data set is belongs to the paradigm two in which contains the kind of actively user engagement so that it could be regarded as more natural simulations. But the baseline method still doesn't cover the user historical behaviors and the dialogue state management strategy is simply realized by a pointer software softmax function. Then uh, it moves to the paradigm three where the user may actively give the provided response and even chat with the conversational agent. So in these settings, the, it requires the agent to understand the user preference and proactively to learn the conversations, to, to, to lead the conversations. Um, the, merit, the merit of the proposed model consists of the goal planning module, which could guide the, the, to, to guide the user response, to guide the agent response to decide if it comes from the retrieval based uh, format response generation or the generation generation based format response generation, which means it supports both retrieval based and generative based given the threshold to indicate if the goal of the current conversation turns is clarified. If not, the generation based format will be implied so, so that keep asking the flexible questions regarding to the item attributes. Or if everything is clarified, it will use the retrieval based model to select the, the, select the kind of clarified question to ask for the users. Then, and also another work which also appeared, which appeared in, in KDD this year, adopt the external knowledge graph to facilitate the understanding the semantic similarity between the item attributes and the user response. It also belongs to the paradigm three, uh, where the user can actively provide the user the, the response. So by the, by the knowledge graph alignment, it will uh, assume the user be able to provide a useful context because one highlight of this, this work considers two separate knowledge graphs where the one saves the relation between the words that appeared in the conversational utterance, another one saves the heterogeneous item related meta, uh, metadata. So in kind of detail with the help of knowledge graph, the, the first KG is a word oriented KG, which is a concept net, which stores the semantic fact and also the co-occurrence co of the word in of the word. Well, the item oriented KG is a DBpedia, which saved uh, some kind of structure structure face facts regarding to the attribute of the items. So the core idea of this proposed method is to force the representation of the nodes within two separate KGs to be close enough so that the word and item co occurs when the word and item co-occurrence in the same conversational authors, it's using the mutual information maximization to unify these representations so that such this step would be particularly 
useful to connect the contextual words and items. But however, this it can only utilize the it only utilizes the conversation data to, in, to infer the user preference without considering the user history records in the system. And on the other hand, it also doesn't support the explicit dialogue statement, statement, state management modules. So previously, we have talked about the most, most existing conversational recommender system that has demonstrated in the small scales. Well, the, but this system is shown as an industrial large scale settings. Uh, this paper has been accepted by the KDD so 2018, and where the NLU and NLG module could be designed as another format, such as the UI system, which makes the system more reliable and stable, and also easy get easy interact with the users. And in this framework, it can still trigger a question uh, to to the users to let the user to pick up some interesting topic at first. And then it will display some of the videos to the user. For example, if the user choose the interesting topic as machine learning, artificial intelligence, and it will show some like uh, kind of videos. And also the, if the users are satisfied with, the, with these provided videos, the user may get highly chance to click them. And such click will be recorded as a positive activity uh, and also as a positive feedbacks. So, and then it will go to the next loop. So therefore, this could be uh, formalized as a general sequential neural modules for these settings where the input could, uh, could include the watching history, the user watch history, the user clicked topics and the user clicked responses. So previous work has, they are the typical works that focus on the natural language understanding and the natural language generation part. And then we also introduced some works that highlight the dialogue stage and management part. The, in, the in the traditional, oh, sorry, in the conversational AI system, the dialogue state management will uh, keep track of the state of the dialogue at, and also it supports make the decisions about the next system action. And here is the examples of the dialogue, uh, the example of the dialogue stack tracking for booking a hotel and reserving a restaurant. So right here, each conversational runs will record, uh, will record the state information. But for the conversational recommender systems, it typically focus in each conversational terms the system will decide whether to make recommendations or ask more questions to clarify the user preference. So the first work we introduce is a conversational recommender system, which has been accepted by CIGAR 2018, where it utilized a reinforcement learning framework based um, a deep policy network as dialogue state, state management. For the user utterance during the conversations, this work introduced a brief tracker module to extract the, the facet value pairs in the conversational terms. And it trained the recommender system using the factorization, factorization machine with considering the dialogue state, the user information, and also the item information. At each turn, the sequence right here, they are trained into a vector using an FCM and then concocted every turns into, into uh, and concocted them, them and also uh, to form the, the, user, the agent's current belief of the dialogue state. And also at each turn, the reinforcement learning module will select the action based on the dialogue state in order to maximize the long-term return. And in these settings, there's total five candidate faces that could be asked to the users. So there could have some limitations of these models because um, it, could, it would be less effective, especially if the numbers of the query attribute is very large, since this 
only support five candidate facets. And also, uh, if all the five attributes has been asked from the agent, if the user may still get may still not satisfied with the results, the this model has to make one time recommendations. So it is which is not intuitive and flexible. And the fully advanced approaches based on this one has solved these limitations. So the this work is estimation, action, and reflection, uh, which has been ac accepted by the wisdom this year. So uh, it works to solve the three core questions, which is in the, each conversational terms, what attribute to ask to the users, and uh, whether it's the correct terms to recommend the items to the user, and how to adapt the user's online feedbacks. The advantage compared with the, the CRM, it, this, this is, these systems may recommend the items uh, multiple times rather than only one. And the conversational will end only if the user accepts the recommendations or you know, the, user, it's, the user choose to quit the recommendations. So, um, but however, it also makes a strong assumption that the user should express the preference clearly in each turn. Um, so it also brings another feedback, uh, it bring another limitations. If the user provides a negative feedbacks, it could not be utilized because it could regard it as the waste conversational terms, uh, which is not, uh, which is not intuitive either. So an extension work based on the EAR, uh, this work, the conversational path reasoning has ac accepted by the KDD this year, where it utilized the context from the user feedbacks, uh, which regarded as explicit, explicitly the format in the graph structure. And all this, all this works in the, uh, in the dialogue standard management part they are belongs to the paradigm one. And, but previously, the, the such information normally has been captured by the hidden, uh, hidden latent representations. And you can see the figure right here. The figure illustrate the path reasoning in the conversational path reasoning modules. The vertices in the right graph represent the, represent, sorry, represent the users and also the items, as well as the other relevant entities and also an edge between the two vertices represent, represent their relations. And the conversational session is, is expressed as a explicitly walking in the graph. So it starts from the user vertex where, where, where here is a tongue and it travels in the graph with a goal to reach one or multiple item vertices that user may like as a destination. So, um, on one hand, the path, the path walking over the graph provides the natural dialogue state tracking for the conversational systems. A uh, policy function has been learned that expect to make the decisions based on the dialogue state S. The output action space of the policy function could contain the two choices, uh, whether ask a next question to the users or conduct the recommendations to the users. And here is the sampled conversations, conversations of the conversational path reasoning in the left part, and which is more intu intu intuitive than the EAR, which, which is the estimation action reflection conversations that I have introduced previously. Uh, the, the reason why it is, it is intuitive because such it could provide explainable recommendations since it has a path grounded the system. And also the negative feedbacks could be regarded as a path pruning process given the graph context, which makes the conversational tune, conversational terms more natural and logical compared to the EAR part. And uh, we jumped into the recommendation process so uh, in this part, we highlight 
what's the difference between the traditional recommendations with the conversational recommendation part in the recommendation engines? So the traditional, uh, the traditional recommendations typically they make the one shot recommendations, but the conversational recommendations they they are multi round, and also the recommendations should be associated with the conversational terms. So for example, uh, the dialogue normally the dialogue will and will, will contain some structured information such as the user preference over the aspects. So under this scenario, how to adapt the user profile based on the such structured information should be an essential part to take into the considerations. On the other hand, some of the work that uh, will learn of dialogue embedding, which has captured the conversational words or the sentence embeddings. Uh, in this set, in this part, the recommendation model should take off how to cover this word or sentence embeddings so that to better to learn a better user preference preference, which means learn a better user embeddings as the conversational terms moves. And for the for the final step of the recommendation, which I mean, uh, if you need to calculate the ranking scores or the rating of MSEs, it's nothing big different. You can still deploy the co collaborative filtering or matrix factorization or the popular graph visit method to calculate the rankings, ranking scores. And uh, we also claim the explanation is uh, important uh, since it's very critical in the modern recommendation system. And it is especially important in the conversational recommendation settings, since the user can better lead the conversations if they are aware of why the certain items are recommended. For example, when it will reconsidering what, what, what questions to ask from the system side, according to the explanations provided by the system. And here, is a state of the work that has been proposed the explainable conversational recommendations. The motivation behind is to provide the explanations so that we help the users understand the recommendations uh, has shown to the users through the dialogue. And also on the other hand, it will collect such uh, user feedbacks from the, from the explanations so as to better understanding the user preference. And in each round, it will provide the generations from a template-based format. And it also provides the human readable explanations by constrained generations through a bidirectional GRU. Um, such constraint com comes from the multi-view concept selection from the user feedbacks. So based on it means based on the explanations that pro pro provide to the users the model is able to learn how the user feedbacks to such explanations. But however, there are some limitations because uh, it assumes the user cannot provide some neutral sentiment attitude, either good or good explanations or not good explanations. And also it always provides the recommendation items in each round, uh, which means lack of the dialogue state management modules. Another work that uh, is open, open ended dialogue KG, it is a corpus we call the Open Dialogue KG that has been accepted by ACL uh, 2019. This work, uh, the, the, the data set is not originally designed for the conversational recommendation task, it's an open domain chat. By associating the dialogue authors with the KG entities, it will be easy to predict the next entities given the, given the ex existing dialogue context through the attention-based graph pass decoder. And also it proposed the uh, KG pass worker model, which can prune, prune the less relevant pass so that effectively reduce the search space. Um, since the attribute in each conversational utterance has linked to the KG entities, so the more transparent and explainable path could be provided as explanations to track the dialogue state. 
So for every modules, we have uh, introduced some typical work that um, that focus on like natural language understanding, natural language generation, and also dialogue state management. We hope the pro the provided work will bring uh, the community some explorations so that we can build a highly intelligent conversational recommendation systems. And we split these works by the three paradigms, which is the system ask user passively response, system asks the user engagement, and also the system asks the user actively enjoy, uh, join the, to the conversational terms. So that's the end of this part. And uh, let's welcome E to briefly to introduce the next part, the toolkit and also the real world conversational systems. Sure, thank you. Uh, so far we have been focusing on research ideas and the papers on conversational AI. And if you want to do research um, uh, in this field and publish papers in the future, that's great. And you could build everything yourself uh, that's what we did before a few years ago. And also probably based on ex existing machine learning, natural language understanding, open source tools, and especially if you want to train end-to-end -end models for conversation uh, recommender system. Um, and that's all, also what uh, Professor Yongfeng Zhang, his lab has done, what my lab has done. And the Professor Yongfeng Zhang has shared his work on conversation recommendation on GitHub that's available here. Um, or you might also consider utilizing some open source components, including open source dialogue systems or open source recommender systems. Right. Here we are at uh, Rexis, so you should know a lot, uh, already know those open source style recommender systems. Um, and here are some lists uh, of open source dialogue management systems, like SIMU, Olympus, and so on. Those are open source for general dialogue management, not for just for, not for conversation recommendation. Um, so for the last uh, few minutes in this tutorial, I actually want to spend uh, some time on how to do build a production live conversation recommender system. And uh, since we have quite some tutorial participants from industry and we want to build and deploy one in real world. And how to how can we fill the gap from research papers to real world production live um, conversation agents? So if your goal is to launch a production live conversational recommender system that can actually talk with user in natural language like a salesperson, and some of the existing system could be useful, uh, especially those commercial toolkits such as uh, like a Microsoft Bot. Google Dataflow, Amazon, IBM, or Apple and Facebook, they all have those some toolkits tailored for developers. Or there are some commercial all-in-one conversation AI platforms that provide more components than toolkits and can support also business users and designers beyond the programmers. Uh, here is one of the platform I'm involved in developing. That's the Rulai platform. So, um, when you use those platforms, be aware that none of those platforms or toolkits or open source were developed for general conversation uh, are not designed for conversation recommender systems. They were designed and developed for general conversation AI dialogue systems. And you might save a lot of time by using the natural language understanding component of those open source or toolkits or platforms but you do need to pay special attention about dialogue manager. As you have seen in today's tutorial, we talk about quite a lot of research work about how to train, how to build all different kinds of dialogue managers for conversation recommender systems. And why we are talking about that? Because for the general dialogue management system, that's, they are using some general dialogue management, management strategy. Um, they, Actually, if you look at the conversation AI literature, there are several strategies for general conversation, for example, finite state-based, rule-based, or frame-based, or information state-based, or classical AI planning-based, or neural network-based, or hybrid methods. 
and each of the existing conversation AI open source toolkit uh, um, or platform we listed here, and as far as I know, are explicitly or implicitly supporting one main general dialogue management strategy, and some might support a hybrid. And the supported general conversation dialogue management strategy is very different from the special conversational recommender system dialogue management strategies we discussed in this tutorial. Thus, none of the existing commercial open source uh, platforms that supports a production live virtual assistant actually support the advanced conversation recommendation strategies we mentioned, like past reasoning, reinforcement learning are not there. And also like what we talked about explanation in conversation um, are not there. So if you use existing conversation AI platform, you don't need to check very carefully to tell whether the platform actually support uh, some of the special requirements you, ha you have. For example, uh, you can, if you can do some research and train a special conversation recommendation policy, generally I view it as a special dialogue manager. And then you want to integrate with the existing platform, existing system. Um, sometimes you can integrate, sometimes you may not be able to, right? You need to decide whether the natural language understanding module and the dialogue manager of those existing platform or system support your conversational recommender system needs. For example, can the NLU and dialogue manager handle many product categories and many different product features? Those are the things you want to pay attention. And myself, I played with some platforms. I didn't develop conversation recommendation on all those platforms. And I did with uh, this platform I was involved in building. And of course, also end-to-end um, -end, uh, open source uh, build ourselves. Another thing I think it worth to show you is um, the, an example of architecture of a commercial or production live conversation platform that can help support developing and managing a production live virtual assistant with personalized recommendation ability. You know, when a company launches a customer facing conversation virtual assistant, a customer will not only asking, uh, any ask the bot for product recommendation. The customer could also ask questions about the products ask for help before or after buying the product, or even ask the virtual assistant for coupon or for discounts. Right. Um, thus, when a company wants to launch your production live virtual assistant to support recommendation, uh, it's actually better to design it in a way so that it can do more than recommendation, because your user will ask, talk with them about other things. And thus, as we talked before, the virtual assistant, the conversation virtual assistant also need to have the ability to support conversational recommendation, conversational search, conversational question answering, social chat, voice command, or even do some tasks. And this is a kind of production architecture that supports all those things. Here, the core component involves what we mentioned before, dialogue manager, natural language understanding and natural language generation. The, di uh, the dialogue manager here, we actually normally will have pretty high standard compared to some of the uh, default one. And uh, you may want to need it to handle multiple intents expressed by the user in a single term. Uh, need to handle mixed initiative through the conversation. Need to have support context switching, co-reference resolution, ellipsis resolution, change of mind, change of information, or change of the goals. And here, uh, usually you want to have an actual an action engine to support tasks, for example, um, order products, changing order status, uh, checking order status, and changing user information, and so on. And in real world, a user usually actually expects the AI conversation virtual assistant behave according to certain normal con convention of human-human interaction. The user will interact with the virtual assistant based on this kind of assumption. And to meet such kind of assumption, the bot, the virtual assistant actually needs to have some common sense knowledge. 
and have certain meta strategies to handle various common situations. For example, a user changes his mind or a user might self-repeating when talking or a user might actually self-asking him, himself when talking with an agent. There might be co-reference resolution and so on. The meta strategy are independent of recommender system, but are needed in order to have a happy interaction with the user. And on this side, you know, a virtual assistant actually need to interact with other parts of the enterprise systems. Um, but, uh, first, we are talking about conversation recommender system. If the company already have recommender system, you can reuse, utilize the existing recommender system, do some modification on the dial manager side, right? Adding more NLU. And they integrate with the existing recommender system to provide personalized recommendation. And as we mentioned, the user may ask the, the virtual assistant for que various questions. To answer those questions, the a virtual assistant and the conversation AI system need to integrate with enterprise knowledge. Uh, for example, integrate with the product database to answer product specific questions. And to access the company's websites and to answer questions because some answers might be online. And the, be able to handle PDF files such as product user manuals so that when user asking questions about products, you can answer based on the user manual and documents and so on. So that uh, your virtual assistant can serve uh, customers' information needs about the products and the services, and the system, the agent can virtual assistant should also integrate with enterprise system, uh, such as some CIM systems uh, and so on, uh, because it need to use utilize those data or take actions over those enterprise system to provide personalized experience for the user to help user to finish certain tasks, such as checking order status, placing an order, change order information, and so on. And another thing I want to mention is a virtual assistant conversation AI system capable of natural language understanding is never perfect. And sometimes it cannot understand or cannot solve the problem itself. And the virtual assistant needs to fail gracefully. For example, the virtual assistant could say, sorry, this is beyond my scope to fail gracefully. While for some cases, and um, the business from business perspective, it might even worse the effort to escalate that conversation from, from the robot to real human. Right? For example, if it's a sales transaction conversation while the virtual uh, assistant is helping customer finding product but sometimes you might escalate that to a real salesperson, right? So that the real salesperson will take the conversation on to help facilitate the sales. That's why you can integrate with contact center softwares uh, to achieve those goals. And another component I want to mention is, um, is this side, the channels, right? A user may interact with the virtual assistant through different channels from voice, uh, social chat, SMS, websites, or mobile app. Uh, a customer facing virtual assistant may want to integrate seamlessly with various those voice and text-based customer touch points. And the virtual assistant should be able to maintain state across customer journey as the customer switch between channels if the customer first talk with you over the phone, the later switch to email, the later switch to text message, the customer experience should be seamless and the virtual assistant should remember the customer, what the customer has said before over different channels. So that's, that's why we here list several channels and the system actually need to manage that. Um, the next component I want to mention is the management console. Conversation AI virtual assistant is a software. Thus, you need to actually manage the software development life cycle if you want to build a product. And the team to build the conversational software usually involves designer who design what the virtual assistant should do. And in many cases, and, and there are 
might be AI engineers in charge of training data, training the model. There might be system integration engineers in charge of integrating with those other systems. Of course, sometimes you can have one extremely capable person do all those things, but that's uh, not very common. They require different skills. Um, thus, uh, the platform also supports management council to support different members of the team. Designer can do the design. The, uh, and the AI person can manage the model and the training, um, and the system engineer can configure integration. And we mentioned, also mentioned about the evaluation before, which includes 10 level evaluation, session level evaluation, and business level evaluation. Uh, it's good, usually good to have analytics module here uh, in real time, constantly displaying those evaluation metrics so that your AI engineer your integration engineer and your business uh, stakeholders, they can look at those evaluation as needed. There are also other life cycle management of the software, such as version control of the bot, version control of your machine learning model, uh, and the unit test, flow test, stress test of your system, uh, and also deployment control and so on, they need to be managed. So the production life system need to have all those components as well. And optionally, you might also have certain templates and certain things special for your special domain. Um, here is an example of the console and an example of what designer actually can do to design. Uh, when you build a commercial a conversation virtual assistant to support the sales with product recommendation, product search, and other basic pre-sales and post-sales ability, uh, you usually need someone in charge of the user experience design that usually are not done by machine learning person. And some technical and engineering person in charge of the training data or system integration will also be there and the platform support that. And this is the drag and drop no code design studio that conversation designer to provide additional information that complements machine learning models. And those, usually those are additional information about the business process and business rules uh, for the virtual assistant. For example, you can design uh, how to greet a people, uh, how to provide help, and one should make a recommendation. And even the user is not asking for recommendation, right? And uh, what to do if a user actually accepts the recommendation, how to convert it to order and generate revenue, or tell the user where to buy the product. And of course, building a successful virtual assistant usually involves much more than this building such kind of rules using the process design uh, console. It must be combined with the other learning ability, like the more, for example, the models we introduced before, right? A powerful natural language understanding and a powerful dialogue management system to handle the variation of natural language and the variation of conversation flow. So because in reality, the conversation will never, usually don't happen as designed. And so the flexibility will be coming from the underlying AI system. Okay. And the designer will design the provided information about a typical business flow, but don't design the conversation. And AI will automate, automatically generate the conversation based on context and its knowledge about the workflow and its, its information from the recommender system or the search engines and so on. And the, the designer will handle the design and the AI engineers handle the model, model training. All right. That's all I want to talk about, uh, commercial um, virtual assistant that supports the conversational recommender system. And that also concludes uh, our tutorial. Here we talk about uh, uh, introduction, background, problem formulation, database sets and evaluation. And we talk about the several models. We also introduce some of the existing toolkits and real systems. None of them are perfect for conversation recommender system. And it's usually will depend on people like you to fill the gap. Um, so that's all for the tutorial. And now it's time for questions if you have any. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Yi. And uh, thank you for everyone for uh, joining the uh, tutorial.